I've been asked in this past year by a lot of customers to look at their pines. Pines are very daunting subjects. Pruning a deciduous tree is relatively easy compared to evergreens, especially pines. A juniper is fairly easy to prune and shape, but pines people haven't a clue. Look at this, this is growing very healthy. These are all the old needles which should have been cleaned back in October, they didn't get around to doing it. But she said, why don't you just trim this tree? I told this customer that it's not just a question of trimming it, you've got to rewire it and restyle it. A pine such as this is really what we would consider raw material or untrained material or even semi-trained material. So it's not just a question of trimming it and taking the candles or the shoots out. It is really doing much, much more than that. So how do I approach a tree like this? The first thing I look at is the general health. Thank goodness it's in very good health, but they have never pruned it. Each year they allow one or two inches to grow, so it keeps adding more and more and more. So there comes a stage where you've got to, as I say in my famous expression, bite the bullet and do something radical to it. So apart from keeping the shape, we have to introduce layers to make it look like a bonsai. So the first thing I do is to clean the old needles out. I won't waste time showing you how to do that. So we have cleaned the needles and look at the needles that have come from just this tree. Look at it, masses of it. So this should have been done by the customer when they had the tree. Not many people think to do that, but just by cleaning it up, it begins to look a little bit better. Then the next thing I do is to prune some of these long shoots off. They're obviously spoiling the line of the tree. I now have some idea. For the size of the tree, the trunk is not very thick. So we've got to think very carefully what we do with it. But I don't want to chop too much off. So let's determine which is the front and which is the back. The front is the side that is more open and also the apex should lean slightly towards you and the first two branches should be like that. So looking at the tree, I think if I turn it around, it's very dense on this side so I wouldn't think of using that readily as the front. This is also very dense. So coming back to the tree, I think this side seems to be a reasonable front. Now just to remind me that that is the front, I will use a marker. I tend not to use markers because I usually think in my brain or I'm very conscious of what is the front and what is the back. So, but for the purposes of this exercise, I will just mark it so that it can remind you, the viewer, as to which is the front, which is the back. So this is going to be our front like so. So anything which is coming in the way, I will probably have to take off. So that is how I'm beginning to think. Also very bushy. If the pads are too long or too high, I will consider taking it out. Just generally thinning will have the desired effect. OK, 
keeping the pads flat. I'm just showing you as a demonstration how just a little bit of pruning can get the pads more flat. But as I say, a lot of people are terrified about pines because they just don't know how to handle them. So I've thinned that pad out a fair bit. This is how I thin this pad out. So you see the difference between this pad, which has been thinned. Look at the amount I've taken off. All that green is from this pad alone. Just this portion I've pruned and all this has come out from there. So that is how I'm going to thin the pads. So I will go through and keep doing it. I will have to consider what needs to stay and what needs to come off. I'm not going to do it in a rush in case I regret, although I should regret, I know what I'm doing, but I still need to keep my options open. I am literally thinking aloud. This is how my mind is thinking. As I go along, I say to myself, what is it I'm trying to achieve? So, what I'm thinking now is, how can I make the pads flat so that it won't merge into each other? This tree is obviously too dense. Now, I'm going to ask myself, this branch at the back here, I don't think I need it. I don't need it even as a sacrificial because by the time you use it as a sacrificial, it'll be years and years, and one doesn't have all the time in the world to wait. So that branch at the back, I can safely take off, make the tree look lighter. It looks lighter straight away. I won't clean that off yet. I will take my time to clean it. Okay, so I've cleaned that. Now let's consider how we improve this pad. You see I'm using the spare pruners very gingerly because I cut my finger the other day. Now I've got to ask myself, if this is the front, this is coming in the way, I can pull that down. Do I need it? I don't think I need it. So I know that most of you would find it very hard to decide what to cut off and what to keep, but I will cut it off. I have, have the confidence to do it. I'm trying to make the tree look lighter because this tree hasn't got a massive trunk. I can make it look lighter. Now this pad has been thinned. You can see how it compares with these thick pads which have not been thinned. Now let's go further up and see if I can thin this a little bit. I certainly can. There is far too much. Far too much.
what I'm pruning, if I can show you closely, if you have a branch like this, you can prune that bit off and leave that shoot to grow. You must always leave a new shoot to grow. Over here also, I can take the tip out, but I've got green here, so that green will continue to pull the sap. So I'm not just chopping at random. I can literally do this in my sleep, but I'm doing it with quite a lot of purpose in mind and I think I know what I'm doing. Now I've got to ask myself if I need this branch. You see this branch is overhanging this one. So I will take it off. This tree has probably never been pruned or styled ever since it was imported from Japan. And the previous nursery that had it clearly didn't do anything to it. So I will now continue to thin. Anything hanging downwards or shooting upwards, I will take off. I don't think I need that branch. So take that off. So dense. Okay, so let's come back to the front of the tree. So this is the front. So we've now thinned three of the pads. One, two, and three. So you can see how much lighter it looks. And I'm creating the space between the branches. Now I've got to ask myself, do I need that one? I will probably need it and take it there. I can wire that back and this can be brought down so this is okay. Now this one at the back I need to thin out a bit. Now this one above here it's overhanging this and it's a very weak branch. Can you see this weak branch here? This weak branch has died because of lack of light. So when there's no light this is what you will get. They will eventually die like this one even. This one is being overhung by the others, so this will eventually die. So I might as well get rid of it. Now this pad is thick. We need to thin that a bit. So there's a lot of thinking involved. I've got to keep asking myself, do I need this? Do I need that? And as I think, I have to decide what to do. This is hanging downwards, so this I take off. Anything which is hanging down you can easily take off. See the tips I would take back, tips I take back. Now let's have a look at the front again and at least I can have 
the use of the marker to remind me of the front. So you can see how that back portion is beginning to look much thinner, not so dense. It will dense up again once it starts growing, but at least we've thinned it out now. So the tree is already looking much better. This of course is just the pruning. There is wiring to do as well. It's very seldom that you can just get away with just pruning. This owner said to me, why don't you just prune the pine? It's not as simple as that. Just pruning the pine may help, but it won't do it justice. There is so much potential in this tree to make it look really nice. So let's make a good job of it. So this is still the front. So we've done one, two, three, four. We've thinned out four pads and we started thinning this as well. So it's almost five that I've thinned, that I've thinned. Now this very thin branch, there are lots of thin branches in here. There's another one here, which we don't really need. And as I said, they will eventually die because there is not enough light in there. So these little ones will eventually die. So might as well get rid of it now. So as I go further up, there's another one. See, it's too close there. Can you see? This one is too close to these two. So let's take this out. So I've already taken out quite a few branches. Look at that. Have a look at all this. Look at all this. I've taken out, I reckon, half the tree. It's so dense. Half of it. All this has been taken out. Now I've got to go higher up and then I will do the wiring. The crown is very dense, so all this can be taken off. No big deal. You can see how dense it is. And as I said, there's always a little dial back. Too dense. And because it's so dense, there are a lot of twigs there or branches. Like this one, if you see, there's a mass of branches. One, two, three, four. I don't need this one, so let's take this one off. The one in the middle, I'll take off. Take that off. Say bite the bullet. Okay, I keep coming back to the front because I've got to have a view through the front to see what the perspective is like. So these downward hanging branches, let's take them off. So you can now see the layer, the layering that I've created just by thinning it out. 
I removed three major branches from the top. The rest will be now wiring. I think I've now thinned sufficiently so because I've already worked quite a long while on this and of course a lot of thinking has gone into it it's not just working on it I did look at this for a long time because sometimes you've got to study the tree before you do any work so although it's been hanging around the nursery every time I pass this tree I used to study it carefully to see what needs doing. So, although you think that I've done nothing to this tree, I have thought a lot about this. So, simply by pruning, I have achieved this state. And we can see the amount that has been taken off. And the next stage is going to be the wiring of this tree. So let me continue doing this Japanese five needle pine. I've got so far, you can see how the layers have been created and you can see the amount of debris I've taken out. I reckon I've taken out two thirds of the twigs and foliage. This is as much as I've taken out. Now, if we look at this tree, there is still a bit of congestion at the top. This site in particular is very congested. So I think this branch here, this is the culprit. If you go back, you can see, go back from the uh, distance, you can see. If I take that away, can you see? By taking it away, I create a space. Or if you use the famous bag trick, you find the with the bag, that can always be affected like that you see so I think that branch has to come out I know that many of you have a problem deciding on removing branches but don't worry this comes with experience the more you work the more you will get the confidence so that whole branch has come out so we've now created that space there and the rest is just gradually wiring the top. This also we can by wire create a nice little space at the top like that. So I'm not too worried about that. In fact I can even take this can you see how much can be taken up? This can come down. This can take down. And I think the rest is going to be wiring. So it doesn't need a lot of wiring because the space is there. But where there is no space, I will create the space. So I'm going to wire that down and wire this down. So I don't need to show you everything that is being done. But when I've completed it, I will then show it to you. So this is the finished article. I won't do much more because I've really taken a lot of this tree. So we can now see the branch structure and the full beauty of the tree. I've kept most of the major low branches because this suits the style of the tree. But again, just to show you the amount of stuff I took off, I reckon I took out two thirds of the branches and foliage. That is all the material I took out. This is literally three sessions of work over two days. So here is the tree all finished and ready to go back to the customer. I would just say something about repotting. 
The customer did ask me if I sh would repot this pine for her. There are two reasons why I'm not going to repot. The first reason is that most pines and junipers, they can stay in the pot for quite a long time. Quite often, I don't repot my pines and junipers more often than once every five, seven, or even 10 years. The longer you keep them in the pot, and if it is even quite pot bound, it has the effect of shortening the needles and keeping the foliage tight. So that is one main reason why I don't need to repot. Also, this is quite a large pot for this tree. So I'm sure there is adequate room for the tree to grow. And because I did quite a lot of severe work on this tree, I'm not going to touch the roots because that can also upset the balance. Maybe if the customer is a bit worried about the tree being pot bound or not having been repotted for too long, I may look at it again next year by which time, of course, next year, quite a lot of new shoots would have grown and I can tidy the tree up again. The wires can stay on this tree for at least a couple of years. I don't think it will mark. This tree, luckily, because the way I pruned it, I didn't have to wire that much. There are some wires on it, but I really didn't have to do much wiring to this tree. So I've achieved it without much wiring. So there you go. This is the end of another white pine or Japanese five needle pine project. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it.